about to start our time together. Thank you for all of you who have joined us online. We welcome you, we welcome you. So yeah, if you guys hear my voice, it is time to come and to start to worship together, to celebrate Jesus. You guys ready? Amen. Yes. Matthew, we we'll invite Matthew to officially open us up in prayer, but let's all stand together. Let's all uh, bow our heads, please. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, we thank you for the fellowship, family, and this wonderful day that you've given us. We ask that you strengthen us and inspire us with your message today. Lord, may you bless each one here traveling, and um, I pray that your blessings continue to pour over us. As we enter into a time of worship, may your name be glorified in all we do. We ask these things in your Lord's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Beautiful day to worship the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Let us praise him with all that we are. For he is worthy. Let's praise him. Thank you. 
worship you, praising the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
Let your will be done. May your heaven be upon us now, Lord God. May we remove all things that are not of you so that we may truly worship you in spirit and truth, Lord God. Search our hearts, Lord God, in order for us to surrender, to continue to, continue to surrender. Anything, Lord God, that you want us to surrender, Lord God. Give us the strength to do so. Allow us to open our heart to your spirit, Lord God. Have your way. And pour down your refreshing, your anointing, Lord God, right now upon us, Lord. Thank you for your amazing grace and that you love us unconditionally day in and day out. Thank you for the breath that we breathe. Lord, we praise you. We worship you in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you are holy. We worship you in this place. Thank you, Jesus.
So many of you, Jess, we've been praying for Conception, we've been praying for Trish and your auntie, uh, Michelle, Gerald, your mom, and so many others, people in the hospital, for Nettie. So I invite you to come now, if, uh, again, the altar is open, we want to pray, uh, again, you don't have to, but the altar is a symbol of, uh, almost like Desperation, victory, yes, but desperation where you're saying, God, I lay this at your feet. I surrender this. Your will be done, not mine. Let's pray. God, the God that is in control, the Lord of the universe, creator, sovereign, mighty, powerful, majestic, but yet a God full of grace and mercy and forgiveness and love, a God that is involved, that is you, and your name is Jesus. And we know, if not now, that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are real, that you are Lord, that you are God. And so we pray, Father, Lord, that you'll continue to use us, joining all the other christ Center churches, Lord, to continue to mobilize and as you have ordained it, Father, that uh, we, your church, your people, is the mechanism, Lord, to draw people to your Son. So as we have been out serving, we have come now, Lord God, to be together as your family, to be re-equipped, to be re-energized, to be filled again with your presence as your family. And so we continue, as you've heard, timeless, countless prayers, Father, for conception, for Trish, for Nettie, for auntie and uncles, and moms and fathers, Lord. We continue to lay them at your feet for your healing, for your say on the matter, for your will to be done, knowing that you hear the prayers of your children, that you involve us in your restoration. Pray, Father, for the lonely, for the sick, those who feel any kind of spiritual impoverishment, who have just been beaten down throughout the week. Lord, we know there's praises and victory, and some of us will walk in here just uh, fueled up and ready to go, but I know some of us, Father, just, just, uh, just took so much just to be here. I pray, Lord, we pray, God, that your presence will be ever so thick, that your love will be so evident, that your forgiveness will reign, and that victory will happen, that lives will be surrendered, that sin will be transformed, that there'll be victory in Jesus by the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. Because you are not only Father, but you are a good Father. So we pray for your church here, Blayo New Life, and all the other christ Center churches our NAS district, our city, our first responders, our schools, doctors, nurses, teachers, we just lay everything at your feet. Your will be done, your kingdom. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, amen, amen, that's right. So be it, we agree, we affirm, that's what it means to say amen, amen, amen. amen. A few announcements we want to uh, remind you. This Saturday, we've all been invited to Daily City NAS. Uh, a handful of the NAS churches are coming together for dinner. 
and uh, the Point Loma Nazarene University uh, Concert Choir. They have a big choir. Uh, so they're serving a free dinner, uh, Daily City Naz. We're going to be joining San Bruno Naz and some of the other uh, Naz churches in the San Francisco area. It's in Daily City. It is kind of far. Uh, but I'm going to be headed out there Saturday. And hopefully, uh, I want to, I'll text and remind you if you can make it. But it's just going to be a great time of dinner and uh, enjoying a uh, 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 concert choir from Point Loma, Point Loma students. And so that is this Saturday at 6 p.m. at Daily City Naz. Also, uh, March 9th, thank you for the, there's about 16 of us, I believe, right, that have signed up for the lunch cruise. Uh, we're excited. Uh, we need everyone there at what time, Donna? At 11? 11 a.m. sharp. Because uh, I just got word that they won't let any of us in until our whole party is there. So we've got to be there. I'm going to say try to be there at 10.50 a.m. if you can. Uh, Child care will be provided for. I'll give you more details for those of you who have uh, young children. Uh, but again, it's going to be an exciting time. We shifted it to lunch because the dinner was just a little bit too pricey. And the daytime, we can see more of, this, of, the, of the light. So it's just going to be a fun time of uh, being together with our spouses. Amen? Yes. Today is our annual meeting. Uh, again, if you are so new to the, the NAS world, uh, once a year, the all the NAS churches, we will pick a Sunday, and it's usually early on, on throughout the year that we celebrate what God has done and we give vision for the future. And so uh, this will be a more distinct, special Sunday. And again, we are all invited. We are going to celebrate for uh, our potluck directly after church. Amen? Amen. All right. Everybody say giving. Giving. As we all know, it's not cheesy. You know, something to make, make it fun, but the Bible talks about that when we give, we are to give out of joy. So if you grumble about giving, which sometimes I have, don't give, right? As God says, the command is to give out of joy. And Jake's going to prepare us and pray for our offering. So Jake, why don't you come? And uh, during the offering, we do not have a special song, but I work hard to kind of try to get all the clips as much as I can from what God has done in the 2023 year. I encourage you to watch the video and celebrate and praise God. Don't go use the bathroom at this time, but just... Enjoy what God has done, Jake. And thank you, watchers. Morning, church. Morning. Morning. Yeah. Yeah. All right, my memory is not that great, but I remember when I was in Iraq and we went out a lot of times. They wanted us to give us all these soccer balls, like a thousand soccer balls. So we're supposed to give you know two or three out every time we go. Probably went out like a hundred times, you know, night, day. Usually daytime, we take the soccer balls, the kids are on the street. They come completely flat though, there's no air, they save packaging space. Things are riddled with holes, some of the walls are caved in. A lot of the holes are, you know, as big as a tire, the ceilings are caved in, things like that. Uh, it's a different place. Uh, kids wearing rags. It just looks like the same clothes every day, not everyone. So again, the soccer balls are flat. They come wrapped in a plastic bag. We'd be giving them out each time, and after the times, the kids' looks aren't matching up with, with how I would think. And I realized they don't know what to do with this thing. Um, I told them we have to air up the soccer balls, you know. I was with the Marines, and nothing against the Marines, but sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> have to figure things out. Um, so we could give the kids a thousand flat soccer balls, but we didn't really accomplish much like that. Sometimes to get the desired effect, we actually need a couple of things. They can't use them. They need soccer balls, yes, and air. In the end, had we not started airing them up, it would have been a kind gesture, but a wasted effort. If you do something, you have to follow through. Nobody else is going to air up the soccer ball. So I don't know what to say. I don't want to say too much here. People have been doing this thing here way longer than I've been here, but still, you and me and us have to remember we're doing this thing here. We have to follow it through. No one else is going to wave a wand and take care of everything. So if we just do, let's say, one one youth night, that's it, just just one night. Um, <clears throat> each kid needs a ride to church and back. We have typical needs such as a few balls or something, just an example, aired up, right? Uh, a leader, 
coach to rally up the kids for the game, someone in charge of the message, maybe clean up uh, after, people to direct praise and worship, and yes, food, every time. And uh, heat, it's 2024. Nobody's gonna stick around, especially the kids, for two hours here when you can see your breath inside the church. And lighting, not just inside, but it's pitch black outside. We're trying to do games and things like that. Can't just skip the winter, not if we can do anything about it. The point is, uh, we're trying to do a whole lot more than just one youth night here. As far as I know, the church has a lot of goals. So, a lot of needs arise, things that need taken care of, things that need introduced, things that need maintained or even fixed. We could give out a thousand flat soccer balls to kids that probably don't know what a TV is, but it would be mostly a wasted effort. It needs follow through. The bare minimum around here will be only to keep the doors open. If we expect anything more from the harvest, or whatever you want to call it, we need to put in more. Same thing, what if we throw a bunch of seeds on the ground, if we have, if, say, say we do have a lot of seeds. Right. We have some, but all right, say we have a bunch of seeds. I'm sorry, double space. Same thing if we throw a bunch of seeds on the ground, lots and lots of seeds. No? Is that going to work? Not really. If I dig a little deeper than that to get much out of it, and there's a lot more to it than that. I really think much of anything that anyone here is willing to give or help out with will really help the church and what we're here for. No matter how small the contribution, especially if it's consistent, any kind of efforts, funds, materials, foods, anything. The pastor has been giving rides to and from youth for a while now, a couple of months I think at least, um, a couple of kids. Uh, with youth, there are a few of us here, we help a little bit, but pastor usually does the majority of things, consistently. He's been giving rides to kids for a few months. In a month or two, the kids were uh, waiting to go home, but one was waiting for the ride to show up. And it wasn't until he said something that I realized, I can't really direct the music and I can't buy the food, but I do have five minutes. So I can wait for five minutes for the, I can wait to lock up the parking lot or whatever else and he can get those kids home. Um, that's something that I do have, I have five minutes. And if that's what's needed, hey, any contribution helps no matter how small. I have a few verses here, and when they go to our homes, we should really think about these verses. The message is from God, spoken through a prophet to other people, but the message is strong and still applies. And believe it or not, I know you're not supposed to do this, but I just got the phone app and went to the Bible, went like this, and I clicked a book, and I got Haggai, and then I had to pick one, two or one. to pick because so I just went with one so but I'm surprisingly I went through all the verses for offering now that I've done this offering it's tough to find something to, to mention um, and you see the same verses over and over when you google it but I, I don't remember seeing any of this and it's 10 verses it's really good so uh, uh, let's see it's about 10 verses if you can listen to this real quick it's out of context the Lord is speaking to other people um, the message is strong and still applies similarly, and I might butcher a few names, so forgive me. Haggai, uh, verse 1. On August 29th, the second year of King Darius's reign, ring, the Lord gave a message through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. The people are saying, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet Haggai. Prophet, why are you living in these luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army said. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest little. You eat, but you aren't satisfied. You drink, but you're still thirsty. You put on clothes, cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you're putting them in your pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go to the hills, bring down timber, and re rebuild my house. This I will take pleasure and be honored, says the Lord. You hoped for a rich harvest, but they were poor. You brought in your harvest, I blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins, said the Lord of Heaven's armies. While all of you, sorry, <clears throat> are busy building your own fine houses. It's because of you that the heavens withhold the dew. Um, so you don't just put, say we have a lot of seeds, you can't just throw them in the ground, right? It's not, you might get a couple of crops, but you're not going to get a lot of corn 
throw some corn on the ground. You have to dig the holes. There's a little bit of science to it. You can sunshine, air, water. And then once you get the crops, I think that's probably when the work begins. You need a lot more stuff after that. So, um, and timing, right? So we need, you know, if, if we want to do this thing, that thing, or the other thing, take care of this or that. We, we need everything to come together. We need, we, you know, certain things have to be in place. The timing has to be right. And it all has to work together. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings. Please allow us to be a part of what you plan to do here and help and guide us along the way. We thank you for all you've given us and uh, everything that's been done already. Please help us to follow through and focus on what is needed here on a consistent basis. We thank you for blessing each of us and pray that you would bless each of those that are committing their tithes here to you today, that you would allow them to do so without any hindrance to their well-being. We pray that you would help us remain faithful and help us to be the church you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Thank you, Jesus, yes? And uh, a lot of that would not have been accomplished, uh, but in and through uh, our church board and our church leadership. And, as, and if you served on the church board this past year, I would just love for you to please stand. Uh, Romy Bagnoten, Romy Taparanza, uh, Tala, and Ruth, and who else am I missing? Uh, Miriam. Come on, stand up. We just want to just acknowledge you, Joseph uh, Woods. Thank you so much. And Donna back there, obviously. Uh, Donna's running the sound uh, back there. So thank you so much and appreciation on behalf of your church family. Uh, we thank you for your hours of service and love and excitement and passion to serve Jesus in and through our church. Amen. 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 Everybody say membership. membership. I want to invite to the stage Gerald and Sonia Hunter and Mike and Michelle Cabrera. Please come. Face the, the church family. We are excited. I want to let you know that we have uh, went through church history. We went right from the beginning, amen, right? In terms of creation, and they have sat down with me, and uh, we, we, were, uh, we relearned and, and learned uh, church history and how we got here. We learned about the Church of the Nazarene specifically, and its doctrines and articles of faith uh, and the impact of God and Jesus through our denomination. And we learned uh, specifically what it means to be uh, a Jesus follower uh, in and through our church. And we sat down together and uh, we went through it. We asked questions and uh, we taught them the secret handshake, now that they know. <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, the Lord has been hearing my prayers, our prayers of uh, almost begging him, God, send. The harvest is huge and plentiful, but the workers are few, yes? And uh, through tennis matches and football games and youth events and fundraisers and house parties and, and just simply doing life together, God has been answering our prayers. Amen? Amen. And so this statement, I'm supposed to say, but it's a great statement. It says here that we welcome you into this church, to its sacred fellowship, responsibilities, and privileges. May the great head of the church bless and keep you and enable you to be faithful in all good works, that your life and witness may be effective in lead leading others to Jesus. It gives me, it gives us pledge on behalf of our church to welcome you in our membership, joining over 2 million members worldwide, 24,000 plus churches in 156 countries. We trust that we will, we will be a source of encouragement and strength to you and that you in turn will be a source of blessing. May the Lord richly bless you in the salvation of souls and in the advancement of his kingdom. First question, do you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior who has washed your sins clean? Do you believe this true truth? If so, say I do. I do. Out of God's grace and mercy, we believe that we are part of a heavenly kingdom. It's a kingdom of which we will reign with the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit for all eternity. Do you believe this truth? If so, say, I do. I do. We believe in a sanctified life, meaning a life set apart, holy for Him. Will you endure in every way to abide and glorify God, live a humble life, have godly conversation, abstaining from evil, and live a life of holy service? And when you say this, I want to remind all of us that we can only do this in and through His help, and his strength. If you agree with that, say, I do. I do. Lastly, do you affirm and agree and understand and abide in Jesus' strength to our Vallejo New Life mission statement, Christ, church, and community? If you believe that to be true, say, I do. I do. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for brothers and sisters growing the church in and through these faithful Thank you that you are the one that will be perfecting them to be more like Jesus. And thank you so much for sending the help. Yes. May they know that they are loved, obviously that they are forgiven, that they have been given new life. I mean, we pray, Father, that as I mentioned, that we will be a source of blessing to them, and in turn, that they will be a blessing. 
cover their families, their workplace, their children, grandchildren. And we know, Father, that obviously you are the God of now, that you are already in the future. May they know that you are the one that holds their future and their purpose. And every worry that they might have and concern, may they continue to learn as I need to learn, Father, to continue to trust in you in all things. Thank you so much, Father, for that this is your idea of family, that you continue, you grow the church. And again, may you cover them today and forever and ever. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. 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 Let's give a round of applause. Amen, amen. Again, why membership? Number one, it gives you a right to, to vote, which we're going to transition to a, a voting procedure uh, very soon. Uh, it gives, uh, it tells the whole church body that you are here more to than just to sit down and warm uh, a pew, right? You are you're making a statement that you say, I want to be part of the whole the whole family and what God has called us to do in and through our church. Amen? Right. And more so. At this time, uh, we want to invite Butch, and he's just going to give us some direction on voting. Uh, again, you must be a member to vote, uh, and Butch will give us instruction real quickly on, uh, on how to vote. We do everything through online voting, and so Butch won't turn over. So, uh, We've been doing an online voting for the past three or two uh, three years now, and I'll be texting and also the link for the uh, for the poll will be on our website. And I know we have a BNLC two thousand twenty three uh, group. I will be texting on that one. I will be texting that on GroupMe. Uh, anybody who did not have any uh, number on or did not receive it, and we even have an instruction video right there, people. Uh, that's easy one, easy to understand. If, you know, when I go to this voting poll, I don't really like to read things. So this will help you. Just listen to uh, who are you voting, and then you, you just say, okay, I know what to, my decision already. So, Ms. Donna, play it, please. Line B and LC Leadership Team Election for 2024. Nice. This year, the VNLC Board of Directors has three open positions. Stewards, we kindly request your participation in nominating your preferred candidates by indicating your The following candidates have been inspired by the Holy Spirit to express their desire to continue. Serving our congregation. One, Rami Bagnotan, incumbent trustee. Two, Joseph Contore, incumbent trustee. Three, Miriam Ramirez, incumbent steward. Four, Tala Criddle, currently serving as the Nazari Mission International Director. Additionally, we have Ruth Bagnotan, who currently serves as the Nazari Youth International and YI Director. Rianne Ruiz. Nominated for the position of Sunday School and Discipleship Ministries International SDMI Director, actively assisting with the youth ministry for the role of delegates for District Assembly. We have Ms. Donna Modesto and Mr. Robert Acosta, both of whom are willing to serve. Furthermore, we are in search of candidates for the Nazarene Mission International NMI Director position which will be vacated by Ms. Tala Criddle. While not mandatory, we encourage everyone to contribute by providing your comments below before finalizing your cho choices. Thank you for your active participation and dedication to our congregation. We'd rather you talk. <laughs> Which thank you for making that fun. Uh, uh, again, uh, pray for uh, the missions position. Uh, and so we're still it's, still, it's a vacant position. And so we will have wisdom from the new board on, uh, on where to go in terms of mission leadership. Uh, and so uh, we are allowed two delegates for district assembly. Again, just for uh, communication's sake, 
uh, once a year. Uh, all the 90 plus churches, we converge in Livermore in May, and it's a wonderful celebration, and we get to uh, represent our church. And so we're excited uh, for Robert and Donna to join us this year. And it's an easy vote this year. It's pretty much yes and no. No one's running against each other. Uh, but the voting is now open. I want to pray first, and then we're going to get into uh, other things. Uh, but let's pray for the voting. Uh, and then you can, voting will close when, Butch? Uh, probably we'll give at least five days, maybe. Five days. Okay. We, okay. Did, uh, we did five days the last time. Okay, great. Yeah. And then we'll text you to remind all of you in terms of voting. Let's pray. God, uh, we do not want to just simply rush through this process. We do believe that these names are anointed and, and Holy Spirit led by the nominating committee. And uh, we now uh, call on your will. Uh, show us how to vote. And uh, we're excited for people wanting to step up to serve. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to invite Romy uh, Tabaranza and then followed by Romy Baknoten. We've got a, a presentation, uh, ideas, future in terms of our sanctuary. So Romy, why don't you come up and share with us? Good morning, everyone. Hey, it's happy new fiscal year for New Life Church of the Nazarene. If you did not know, this is the, this will be the first one of our fiscal year 2024. Our year starts in March. Okay, our fiscal year. So this is our new year. Okay. So it's appropriate then that we start with what we plan, we need to do, we plan to do for our facilities. Okay. <clears throat> uh, right. And next slide, you will see the aerial view of our facilities. You see there the church building, uh, our field there, playground area. Uh, basketball court, parking area, and all that. Yeah. Uh, just to uh, remind us all, we had made a lot of improvements, did a lot of work in these facilities, uh, which we have done during the past we have been 23 years here. And the whole facility has changed completely. Okay. For this year, we are saddled with a lot of things to accomplish to improve our facilities. Unfortunately, the year 2023 did not, we were not able to yield enough savings to be able to fund all the things that we need to do for our facilities. But here they are, I'd like to show you the list of all the projects that we need to accomplish this year. Okay? The first one, can you read them? Yeah. Read there? Yeah. First one is sanctuary upgrades. This is our sanctuary. Okay. What we plan to do is to improve this area to make this more utility, utilizable, or whatever you word you need to use there and more flexible for our all, for all our needs, okay? Perfect. Much like a multi-purpose room, okay? Every time we have a major event that is happening that we need to have in our church, our problem is the venue. The venue costs so much and they're difficult to find, okay? Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, uh, Christmas and all that, we always get cramped in our dining room, which is very tight and full of lots of equipment, furniture, and all that. So cramped. So most of the time we move out to the open area, which is not suitable because it's also very uh, tight, right? But if we do something here, we can make this a multi-purpose room 
we can move out, uh, we will remove the pews and use movable chairs. So whenever we have a major event, we pull out the chairs, bring in the tables or whatever, Amen. and then have this uh, nice, beautiful place for celebration and event, okay? Secondly, if you notice, our, sta our stage here is also too cramped for our music team and all the other presentation of kids or whatever we have here is too tight. So the plan is to move this forward right towards the line of the doors here and give enough space for whatever presentation, revivals, whatever things we need to do up here. And then move back the chair so that there is enough space for everybody to move around and make this a very useful place, all right? That is plan number one. Once we remove the, car, uh, the pews, we will try and redo the flooring, replace it with carpets or tiles to make it more uh, durable and easy to manage, okay? That is number one. But all this will cost some money, yeah? Okay. Uh, regarding the pews, we have an organization that takes in the pews, arranges for other churches to pick them up, or we uh, arrange for us to deliver it to them. Sometimes we can get some money back as a donation from the receiving church. Sometimes you just have to give it for free if they don't find any value in them. Okay? But the, the main thing is that we are able to move them out and create this space for our use. Okay? We will be working on that and hopefully we will be able to succeed and implement this uh, particular project. Okay? The next uh, project is the worship equipment, roof and wall repairs. This particular space here, inside, I just, I was not able to download the pictures. This is damaged already, the wall shares are damaged because the roof has leaks, the roof is dilapidated and it needs to be inspected, repaired and re -roofed. And the walls, the drywall removed, studs replaced, and a new wall installed and created. Next project would be the bathroom roof over there. The outside the corner here is already dry wet, with the dry wet going in underneath this the uh, roof uh, <coughs> fascia. I think the corner of the roof pass is already very dry wet and it started falling off now. So we need to repair that. But when you do that, you also have to replace the roof. It's another expense, major expense there. The third one, we have a new kitchen exhaust hood that needs to be installed. But for it to be effective, we need to do a ducting to take the air out, exhaust it outside. And then we need a ducting installed, power connected, and all that. All right? <clears throat> and then uh, if you notice, whenever we have events in the dining room or in the lobby and all that, our lighting is very dull. Not enough illumination level there. So it's difficult when we do Bible studies every Sunday morning, we squint because there is not enough light to even read the Bible there. So we need to get that updated and improved. Romy McNaughton, who is the head of our men's ministry, has already looked at several options of LED lighting, which is twice as bright as the regular fluorescent lighting. That's what we want to have there. Okay? And then the other project is to have a container van to accommodate all our storage uh, items there. Okay. Landscaping equipment, uh, props for uh, the projects that we have here and many other things that are stored there. We wanna vacate that area 
and you uh, put all this stuff in a container van outside so that that particular space can be opened up and our kitchen move out there to create the space more usable because right now we have a choke point right here at the entrance door where people go in, others go out and others bringing in the food, others taking out food. So that's always, uh, there's always a jam over there and people sometimes don't even go there, they just stay outside because they don't want to manage that. Okay, so we want to take care of that too. So those are the projects that we have here. Again, we have another facility that you may not be aware of. We have a parsonage where Pastor is, uh, and his family is living right now. During the latest inspection by our main guy here, Joseph, he found that uh, the garage door of the side of the garage is already a dry rot. The frames of the door is dry rot and falling off. The walls are already done. We need to remove that. Although we have replaced some walls during the upgrades in 2016, 17, there's more that is uh, damaged right now. Okay, so we need to work on that too. Again, the uh, parsonage building. We have two parts of the parsonage building. One is the single uh, story part and the two-story part of the back. The junction between the two-story part of the building and the single-story part, the junction between them has been completely damaged right now. The studs, the beams and all that are all getting dry rot. So we need to replace all those and then re-roof and replace the walls. And it cost a lot of work that needs to be done there and maybe a lot of money also to be spent there. Okay. And again, another thing that uh, the group, Joseph and uh, <coughs> Dado, found out is that we have seen termite infestation in the second floor of the building. We need to root out these termites, replace the damage, structural members and then treat them so the termites will come back. For the treatment and all that, it's a specialty work that needs to be done by a contractor, a pest control company. All right? So those are the projects that we need to accomplish this year. Uh, you can show where there's the uh, visual of where these things will happen. And fortunately, I could not show you the uh, aerial uh, photo of the parsonage because Google Maps had changed their policy. You can no longer download the map now. So the map that I'm showing right now was downloaded a few years ago. Okay. So you can see there the locations of the projects that we're planning to do. If you notice the bright spots there, the basketball court, playground, and all that, they're all products of previous work that we did. Okay, so how do we accomplish all this? Okay, for funding, we are thinking of pleading to all the members for donations and pledges to support these projects. And we call again on the women, women's ministry, to continue with their fundraising if they can assist us here with their crafts fair and maybe other uh, fundraising efforts they can have. This is not an order, this is a request. <laughs> <laughs> the men's ministry will continue with trying to uh, generate some funds through the previously successful uh, food booth that we have. I heard good uh, feedback from those who have availed of it. They said they liked how we presented it. They liked the food that we serve. So we want to do it again 
because that time we were able to generate some good uh, funds from that project. So we will try to do that and maybe even think of other ways of uh, funding. All right? Now, finally, I'd like to call on Robin Bagnota here and Joseph. Just come up. <clears throat> the work plan for this to be accomplished will be two ways. Just like what we did with all the other projects in the past years, we did all them 90 to 95 percent volunteer work. Volunteer work is more effective, more fund saving and all that, because if you don't know yet, whenever a project is done through a contractor, a general contractor, the general contractor adds 20 to 25% of the cost of the project, then the specialty contractor adds another 15 to 25% into the project and then the actual cost of labor and materials. So what that means, if you do your own labor and do your own purchase of the materials, you save about 50% of the cost of the project. One example is our basketball court. The, the basketball court here that we have was estimated to cost about $50,000. But because of these men, these leaders we have here, and all the volunteers from down there, we were able to complete that project for less than $20,000. Yes. That's more than 50% savings. Don't forget okay. the stairway. Uh, then the stairways <laughs> and all the other things that we did, 90 to 95% was done through volunteerism. Okay? So these guys here, Romini Bakrautan is the head of our men's ministry. Okay. Those who want to volunteer their time, most of the work will be done on Saturdays. So please. They will be considering your presence there. We can prepare all the tools for you, prepare all the materials for you. So Romy, she will be the one to do the uh, scheduling. And Joseph, and both of them will be the lead persons in, uh, in these projects. Okay? <clears throat> now, involved in these projects that we have are specialty work, meaning work that we cannot do ourselves because either they require uh, licensing or they require particular specialist knowledge of the work, like roofing, called qualification. Yeah, roofing needs to be approved by the city and all that, if it is more than 100 square feet. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to be mindful of that too, and that will cost a lot, as I have said. All right? So Joseph, here he will be in charge of coordinating with everybody, finding out, talking to people, and asking them for who are trying to give donations, or who would like to make, make a pledge to support, fund some of these projects, okay? I look forward to, be, to have an exciting year. I'm sorry, I will be able to participate in these projects, but I could not fully do it like I did before because of my family situation right now. So these two guys will be the lead. Okay? Yeah. So Romy will have to talk to uh, you how you would manage to start these projects, how to schedule them, how to sequence them, and all that with Joseph here. Yeah, Rome. Good morning. Yeah, uh, okay, thank you, Vero, for just uh, this really uh, amazing uh, project plan. So, the question is the implementation plan now. So, it will be uh, a partner here. We're going to take care, as I said, the implementations of all these projects. So, uh, 
Yeah, I'd like to thank all those guys that really did all those uh, uh, volunteers that we did all the projects. It's really uh, amazing what we have accomplished. Um, almost, I've been here for almost 21 years. So, uh, sorry we didn't have, I think we don't have that really technology before to see our church. It's a really big difference. The first day that we came here is, you can call it, that's not a church, it's not a home. So it's really like a lot of uh, mess outside. So we have all those things, the fences, everything, the paint, uh, the one you see right now, it's really big help. And thank you guys for, especially to those, as where Romy said, all those projects that we did, we did is uh, mostly came from donations and pledges. So and uh, now and fundraisers too. Thank you, thank you for your participation and thank you for your uh, uh, volunteer volunteerism. Again, uh, I'm the third guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they already said much of all, but the only thing I wanted to say, uh, please don't be shy to present yourself, volunteer, give me your time, and don't be shy to also to donate. <laughs> you, can, you can put your wallet, you can grab your wallet, left hand or right hand, and you can write a check or you can give me a cast. But everything will be noted, and you know, notice also that everything is documented that you give the volunteering, only, not only just volunteer physically, but also financially. But try God, God's love you. If you use your heart, we can do all these things. Amen. You know, two hands, one heart, is what we need. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you for Kiromi Romi and Aring Romi and Pastor. Thank you all. Big dreams, amen? Amen. You can uh, hit it one more time, Donna. You know, in previous churches, I've always prayed for uh, men to be vocal. And, uh, and I've told you this before, and, you know, in previous churches, it's hard for the men to get up here and speak. At our church, we can't get them off the stage. <laughs> Praise God. And I thank God for that. I've been praying for that. And men to be vocal. And, uh, and men, you've left me four minutes. So uh, praise God. <laughs> but that is an answer to prayer. Men taking leadership. Amen? Amen. Uh, we, we saw the video, so I'm not going to go through this whole uh, thing. And just This is just a, a recap of what God specifically has done in and through our church. Uh, we talked about, you know, trash pickups and feeding the hungry because uh, when we get our things healthy and in gear as a church family from facilities and relationships and whatnot then we can be more healthy to continue to reach a lost and broken world amen partnering with the other healthy christ-centered churches uh, and so forth and so uh, i was going to initially read everything here but i want to just show you financially where we are at if you can hit it one more time uh, so when you see this graph, hopefully it'll be on there any second. Uh, well, there, there it is. Uh, when you compare columns in terms of uh, giving, right, uh, and also expenses, if you kind of do the math, uh, each month has been positive, uh, meaning more giving than expense. But in the month of March, uh, particularly in the month of November, we've had... Uh, uh, mortgage payments that are very, very expensive. Uh, for instance, a uh, payment of what? Probably about 10000 in November. Uh, so that kind of pushed us over. And then uh, the parsonage repair uh, was about 6000 in December in terms of uh, 
uh, the, the rat infestation problem. If you didn't know, right, uh, living in our house is Apollo, Camry, Caden, Sky, myself, and like 30 rats. Uh, and so uh, thank you, church, for investing and caring for us. That problem is, is now eradicated. Uh, but things cost money. So I, I praise God because giving, if you compare most column, the column to the expenses, has been on more of the positive. But where we were not able to a, uh, accrue a savings is because of the mortgage payment and the 6000 unusual repair for the parsonage. Is that, is that clear? So we praise God for the giving. Uh, I thank God for all of you who are, you know what, I believe you guys don't even call it a sacrifice. It is our joy to give amen? amen and so uh i just want to communicate that in terms of uh financially where we're at so it is a positive swing but there the needs are great amen yes all right if you hit it one more time and one more time uh i want to remind you in terms of the vision of our church it's not there's no new vision we are all still about striving to enjoy our one-on-one -on -one relationship with our god Right from you know personal devotion time, uh, spending time with Him, growing in Him. The verse says in Psalm 119, "How can a young person stay on the path of purity by living? Amen. By living according to Your Word. I seek You with all my heart. Do not let me stray from Your commands. I have hidden Your Word in my heart that I might not sin against You." Right, and so. There's nothing new in terms of uh, our mission statement and our vision. We believe that if we are to grow, our one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus is healthy. And so uh, I was going to read all these things, but just to, if I were to ask you, what has God been teaching you personally lately? What would you say? How, what have you been reading lately in terms of hiding the word in your heart? What has God been teaching you specifically? And so we will still strive to uh, have Jesus at our core uh, in terms of growing our personal relationship with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Number two. I'm going to go through this real quick. The church, the church family. Again, my whole, my whole thrust and core that every single one of us knows our ministry within the church family. Yes? There could be a number, number of things that, that God has called you to do. But what is your role? What has God called you to in the church family? From landscaping to tech to fundraising to all of that. That every single one of us will know where God has called us within the church family. Uh, my whole uh, vision also is that every single one of us will be in some sort of Bible study, weekly Bible study. Uh, we only average five to six, sometimes seven on Tuesday nights. And the men's ministry meet on Thursdays. And the youth ministry, we've been averaging anywhere from 26 to almost 30 kids. That every single one of us will be involved in the corporate study, Bible study of the word. Amen? Sunday school also. Uh, so that is my vision. That every single one of us is not only enjoying your personal Bible study, but in some sort of Bible study to hide the word in your heart. And this is where some of us will start to feel guilty. <laughs> Pastor, don't look at me, right? I know if you look at me, I'm not in a personal Bible study. I'm not in your Zoom class. The challenge is still there. Again, my job is not to alone be your best friend, but to hold you accountable in terms of the study of the word. Amen? So I implore you, and it's a wonderful time, you know, when, when Butch and Jake and I and, and Jay and Gerald and Matthew and when we come together and we read the word, it's just so rich. And I know the men enjoy the study too on Thursdays. And so I uh, implore you, not for me, but thus saith the Lord, amen. Hide the word in your heart. Study not only by yourself, but together as your church family. Uh, if you feel guilt when I say that, just rejoice that God is a God of grace and mercy and is drawing you to him. Amen? Amen, amen. Uh, again, my whole thrust is that every single one of us will know that when we come, we know where God has called us to serve, specifically. 
right? Last thing, community. Uh, you know, we were going to continue to serve in the community. We're going to continue to partner with other churches together to serve. Amen? We're going to continue at the, the Dream Center. Uh, they've asked us, uh, you're going to be hearing again uh, another uh, Dignity Day in April. Uh, Dr. Mike Hester has, has contacted me that we're going to, they'll, they'll need our help again. Uh, last time we provided uh, worship music. Uh, and set up, right? Thank you for all of you uh, who continue to serve in and through that way. We're going to continue to feed the hungry uh, with them. We're going to continue to build up uh, our clothing ministry. Uh, thank you for all of you who have donated clothes. Every week I give out clothes. I just want to let you know that. And so, uh, especially we need jackets. We need baby formula, right? Uh, uh, even uh, uh, non-perishable goods that, need, that don't need to be refrigerated. Uh, I get knocks on the doors all the time, and so uh, we're going to continue our clothing uh, ministry. We're going to continue serving the poor. We're going to continue cleaning up our community and strategically working with non-Christian groups. Why? So we can build relationships, right? That they'll know, and, I, and it's just so encouraging that sometimes these groups will say, you guys are the only church that helps out. And that just warms my heart. It breaks my heart, if you know what I mean. But it just blesses me. So we will continue to outreach in those certain areas of service, right? Uh, and again, simply, you know, we, we, we average anywhere from 70 to 90. That we've, we've spilled over 100 people. But can you imagine this time next year? And I highlighted there in yellow. If every single one of us just had at least two people or two family members, two families in mind that God is laying on your heart. If God, if you don't know who those people are specifically yet, pray, ask God. If every single one of us just focused on at least two people that God is going to cause us, or two families, that in, at every church event, every church function that we, we invite, that we pray for, that we invest in, that we disciple, that we don't just bring them to church, and say, okay, here, pastor, go ahead, you do your thing, I'm going to go over here, right? Go, pastor, do, go, do your thing, you know, that you invest in, amen? And so every single one of us just invest in at least two, two people to draw them. You know, I've talked to other uh, churches and, and whatnot, and I've asked them simply, how, how, how have you grown? And these are churches that, have, have, that their, their, their sanctuary is filled. And the pastors tell me, look, our people are so excited to invite them to the church. They, they don't just come to church and get here, but they, are, they just are so excited to bring them here, to invite, invite, invite. And so I implore you for at least one or two people Write it down. Write their names down. Pray for them daily. Uh, it's going to cost time also that it, 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 and, and to invest your time in the areas where they're in. Right? Again, if our church closed down its doors, if we decided today that we're no longer going to exist as Vallejo New Life Church of the Nazarene. Would our community notice? Would our community even care that we don't exist anymore? And my hope is that if we were ever to shut down, that people are like, where did they go? Right? They were such a beacon. They are such a light. And that is my hope that we not only enjoy Jesus personally, we come together and we take care of our church and invest and, and hold each other accountable and pray for each other and, and be in Bible study together, but also that as we are healthy, that we move out continually in this lost and broken world, which needs Jesus so desperately, and that we have, that we're excited to bring people here. Would you agree that this would be an exciting place to bring people to find Jesus? Amen? And so a year from now, I hope at the next annual meeting that this place will be filled with people that God has placed in your heart. Pastor, church is just my time. 
I just might think, uh, just, uh, just for me and God, I don't, I don't really don't want to dabble in any of that stuff. I, I understand. Sometimes it's just for some of us, it's just, it's so hard just to get here. But again, this is not me speaking, thus saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. To go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them what? Right? The, way of Word, the ways of Jesus. So I hope and pray that there will be people in your life. Again, I'm not saying uh, because when churches predominantly report church growth, Right? They will report, oh, we, we grew 20%, but you know what actually really happens sometimes? Is that it's church hopping. They steal another family from another church and bring them here. We don't want stealing, right? We don't want to say, hey, our church is better, right? We don't want to steal from another church, but we are being called to reach specifically those who are unchurched. Amen? And it's hard. It's going to be difficult. But we get to do this, right? Just like that feeling when I go to a Warriors game. When I go into that Chase Center. I get to do this. It should not be a burden. Amen? So, last thing. Uh, I planned out a skeleton calendar like I do every year. Uh, you know, from March we've got you know, the, the dinner cruise and and I've also put, I've already talked to Mike Hester. He's, he's near begging us to, uh, you know, uh, come and help out. They always need volunteers. So from feeding the hungry, I'm not gonna read it all, right? Uh, May, we've got District Assembly, we've got Elevate, uh, we've got camps, I forgot to put the youth camp in July, you know, uh, family camp and revival and more feeding the hungry and December is a full month. This is just kind of a rough skeleton uh, calendar that the new board and I will be investing in, and sometimes things will change. Uh, again, I, I would love to be that church that the, when there's hurts and needs and, and emergencies in our own city, that we rally, right? If a, if a house gets burned down within our radius, that we would rally together and say, hey, how can we help and bless that family? Amen? That we would be so excited as we are when we celebrate our September anniversary, right? There's so much energy. I see you, right? It's anniversary. Let's all get involved, right? Let's all be there. Let's all cook. My whole plan also, my whole vision, my whole heart is that when we have a service event, like a Dignity Day, or just feeding the hungry, that we will be so excited. This, the same excitement that we have in terms of anniversary and family camp, uh, that, that, that same excitement will be for loving the poor and serving those who are less fortunate. Amen? Amen. Church family, I know it's hard. We're busy. Sometimes Saturdays. I don't want to volunteer with Romy and Joseph. <laughs> I want to just sleep in and just barbecue. And I know, I know, I know, right? I know. It's going to be difficult. As it, like I said, we get to do this, but there will be some sacrifice, right? But He is a holy God. We know our future is set. We know that split second that when we die, we will be in eternal glory with Jesus forever and ever. And there's so many in our city who do not have that hope. Yes? Derek, I want you to come up. I don't want you to. I need the mood music to, to kind of get us into the table. And you know, in terms of communion, I always usually read this later, but there's a preparedness that needs to be done. Not a perfection, but just getting right. Because it says here in terms of the table, that therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A person ought to examine themselves before he or she eats the bread and drinks the cup. So we do this once a month, and it's sacred. That's where we get the word sacrament, right? It's a sacred outlet where God is ordained that we hold matrimony as sacred, we hold baptism as sacred, 
and the table as a, a sacred event that we prepare our hearts. As we all know, the body and the blood is representation of what Jesus has done. He broke his body for us. I'm going to pray. And just know after I pray, as the kids come in here, just don't be shocked. It might be a little bit loud and it might be a little bit rowdy, but, um, but just know after we pray, we're all going to stand. We're going to come through the center. I'm going to go out again in terms of our usual process, but prepare our hearts. Let us pray. God, thank you. Again, that we get to be your children. We are adopted in daughtership, sonship, that you are our Heavenly Father. I pray, Father, that we will be that child that is just so excited to invite. Yes, Father, we know that your word says so many will reject you. But I do pray, Father, right now that you will Show us, Father. We already know. Some of us already know. People we work with. People that we are, we fellowship with. Maybe even to the family member, whoever it is. But may you lay those people on our hearts right now. May we be so proactive. In, as you have laid your life down for us, that we will lay our lives down for them. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for where we are at now. And thank you, Father, for all the dreams and visions from sanctuary and outreach that you have bestowed on us. You are the God of miracles. We sit here and we're like, what? I don't know how, but we know that you can make a way. So at the table now, Father, may we prepare our hearts for you, our holy God, the power of your Holy Spirit, Continue using us to proclaim Jesus. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody say. Amen. If you're willing, please stand, come, come to the middle. You guys know the drill. Let us partake at the table. Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say it. Amen.
Amen. Would you stand and greet one another? Say hello to each hello. other. And then we're going to prepare to feast together. Thank you all of you who joined us online. Thank you, God. Thank you. 